Um, for the second question, um, as a creator, I believe my responsibility lies not in serving any single entity or any single specific interest or group, but in working toward a more inclusive and insightful future. By engaging with diverse perspective and fostering dialogue, I aim to create meaningful connections and contribute to the involving landscape of contemporary art. The curator is not someone outside or above the spheres of power that organize the ways in which we live, the ways in which uh, bodies are distributed in living spaces. The curator is not someone outside or above the devices that define which people, which issues, or which places matter or do not matter. Devices which define what kind of art is valued and what kind of art is not valued. Rather, the curator, along with artists, museum directors, galleries, editors, historians, and others, they work together to define what matters and what does not. They work together in defining the values of things, artistic values, social values, monetary values. In this sense, there is no such a thing as an independent curator. There are curators in fact, who imply themselves in the world, and curator, curators who see themselves are not implied in the world, or even, or even indifferent to the world, as if art were something separated from the world. However, even those who say they are not implied, they actually are implied in life, they are implied in reality as their supposed neutrality only confirms the hegemonic state of things, the way the world works, only confirms the inequalities, the violence that structures the world. In this sense, maybe the important question is not for whom does the curator work, but uh, for what does the curator work? Ich erfreue mich des Privilegs, freie Kuratorin zu sein, im Interesse der Künstler und Künstlerinnen. Die Realisierung einer Ausstellung in einer adäquaten Location erfordert aber pragmatische Kooperation mit unterschiedlichen Institutionen. Meine Partner sind daher Kunstforen, Kunstvereine, Museen, aber auch Artist Run Spaces und transnationale Bildhauersymposien und vermehrt das Institut für Stadtgeschichte in Frankfurt und die Marinis Hess Kunststiftung ebenfalls in Frankfurt. Mit der habe ich 2011 den mit einer repräsentativen Ausstellung verbundenen Marlies Hess Kunstpreis für bemerkenswerte ältere Künstler aus Hessen gestartet. Außerdem mache ich auch das Fundraising für diese großen Projekte und äh, das heißt, dass die Förderer sowohl öffentlich as auch privat sind. So therefore, who do I curate for? I first of all curate for myself, actually. I have a problem, I, get, I can't get rid of it. And with the help of the exhibition, maybe it's some kind of self-healing, I don't know. But that's how I work. I have to be interested in the topic. I have to like the topic. I have to be taken by the topic. It has to grab me and not let go of me. And keeps me busy 24 hours a day and after the exhibition I learn something from it and I get better, wiser, I don't know, but it fulfills me. It's a thrill. It's a learning process. But first of all for me 
And thank God people like my exhibitions, otherwise most probably I would have done or two and nobody would have worked with me. And currently I'm, I did like, in over 20 years, I did uh, around 200 exhibitions so far. I work with non-profit, with profit, I work with museums, biennials, all kinds of institutions. No budget, low budget, high budget. I, I saw them all. And actually, interestingly, in a high-budget exhibition, a large-scale high exhibition in a very fancy institution, I learned something, but I might learn even more in a no-budget, underground, initiative, off-space gallery. So you never know. And so that's the first answer. I curate for myself. The second party who I curate for are the artists. If the artists are not happy in my exhibition, the exhibition is a failure. And I don't say this only because, or because of professional reasons, because if the artists are not happy, they won't work with you again, and they will talk, and nobody will work with you. No, I really believe sincerely that, you know, the exhibition is some kind of marathon. It, it has a, a, a preparation phases, it has a research phases, then comes the construction of the exhibition, then it's the exhibition opening, the exhibition itself, you have side events, and then, you know, the exhibition ends. And then you might have a publication or whatever. So it's a very multitask and multi-layered project, and it takes a, a long time. It might take three months, six months, two years. So during this time, and especially with the opening of the exhibition, if the artist is not happy with the exhibition, there is something wrong. I mean, I did something wrong, or the institution did something wrong, or something, you know, happened, I don't know, but it's a collaboration. So therefore, I believe that the artist, I curate for the artist as well. The third party is the institution, because the institution has to be pleased as well, in a way, because it's a professional, collaboration between me and the institution. So the institution hires me to do the exhibition, to do the job. I'm an employee. So therefore, I also curate in a way for the institution. But that doesn't mean that the institution can dictate or can, you know, pressure me in doing a certain exhibition or in selecting the artist. I would never let an institution interfere with my personal uh, artist selection or work selection. Because then it's not my exhibition. It sounds very harsh maybe, but this is my exhibition with artists in a certain institution. But I, I am responsible for it. So if something goes wrong, you know, the artist will come to me, the institution will come to me, the people will come to me, the press will come to me. So I have to be assured and I have to be aware of all the steps and I have to be confident. And I can only be confident if I love it and if I believe in it. So therefore, yes, the institution should be happy, but they are supposed to be happy because they hire me for my work and my work is what I am. So therefore, Obviously, you have to be very, very open to communication, to relations with the artist and with the institution managers. And you have to integrate them, you have to inform them. And I always, for my exhibitions, from the first conceptual framework until the opening, I share everything with everyone. And I integrate everyone into the project. But I'm the leader of the project. I'm responsible for the project. So therefore, it's for me, it's for the artist, it's for the institution. And in the end, obviously, it's for the people. But that's only, unfortunately, the last part. Because I don't know what the people will need, will like, or what they want. If the people are pleased, I'm very happy. If they are not, I will wonder why they are not pleased, or what is the problem, or why do I get negative response from the people, from the press, I don't know. So the people are actually for me some kind of 
feedback generator. It's a very pure feedback. And obviously, the people, there's no such thing as the people. You know, different ages and different classes and different educational backgrounds, they all are part of the thing that we call society. But it's like a pineapple. From the outside, it looks like one thing, but then if you cut it open, there are uncountable subsidiary systems. Independent for ourselves, but also for a community. Both the community of viewers and the community of artists. We work for the space we have chosen as part of an overall social sculpture. The space is part of the artwork and we serve the space. The work and exhibition is developed for the space. Um, I'm an independent curator uh, which gives me the freedom um, to create and put together different art uh, projects um, the way I, I find interesting. I've been curating since my first year in uh, art school when I did a BA in fine art painting. I curated the interim exhibition for the first and second year students at my art school in London. Um, I have been curating since then. This was 2009. So I've been curating on and off for over 10 years. I am also a very proud member of a um, London based art group called Art Can. Uh, we have over 300 artists um, in over 25 countries all over the world and uh, it's free to be a member but uh, um, what we are requested to do is to contribute in one way or another. So I have curated uh, the booth for Art Can at Supermarket in October 2021. We were eight artists then. I did an open call um, within the group and I curated um, Art Can Stand for 15 artists in May 2022. Sorry, the first was 21. Um, and the great thing with Art Can is that um, I get free hands to, to um, curate the way I want with the support of the founder, the amazing Kate Enters, who founded this. 10 years ago we're actually celebrating 10 years anniversary today uh, this year so um that is a, a very nice position to be in we are all volunteers which means that we're doing all this at our free time but uh, we are really passionate about about art and and and, and so on I believe that the experience with art detached from the criteria of objectivity of rational philosophies and physical sciences does not need to gain pertinence or prove relevance the imperative of concrete definition of its object, nor the precise delimitation of the variables that impole them. Artist or curator to explain or even predict the environments, phenomena, facts, contexts, and realities that he observes. This circumstance means that whatever its content, whatever role we assume within an art project artistic practice establishes itself as an instance of thought that favors questioning and considerations to the detriment of certainties and clear answers, thus giving us plural possibilities of carrying out comprehensive drifts for issues related to man, life, and existence. More than in any other speculative field, the knowledge generated by artistic practice, by translating and reconstituting languages, thoughts, ideas, and theories, and by establishing itself as a field of reflection, open to transit, deviation, passage, is an inevitable faculty and naturally exposed to the influence of interpretations, worldviews, hierarchies, of values, expectations, hopes, and emotions that we engender, each one of us, incessantly, in our passage through the existential intermission that we are inscribed. As working with art is, therefore, 
a specific means of evoking questions about what is or is not visible in the reality that we accept, I think that the function of curatorship, as well as the function of poetic construction, also to seek to reveal the traces of the questionings, of the experiences that we unfold and that however diffuse they may seem, always offer us possibilities of expanding our conscience and expanding the languages that we use to share the concerns, the astonishments and the existential doubt that surround us and affect us on a daily basis. Well, because curating to me is an art-making process, I have to honestly admit that it's not only the expected visitor I work for. I do it out of myself to fulfill this task that appears fresh and inviting to me each time. It's fortunately a paid job, a profession. But of course, I'm highly motivated to catch people for the arts and inspire them with new perspectives. And I want to move the art scene around me too. <laughs>